It's interesting to see in my direct experience how before coming across the Balance View training, I was heavily addicted. Uh, addicted to my thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences and describing them all day, all night. With all kinds of descriptions that I read in books, that I picked up from family and friends, from my culture, the greatest of addictions, you know, sometimes we try to cure addictions like drinking or sex or drugs or food or binging on TV or whatever. Uh, but the greatest and most essential addiction that we need to look at is really the addiction to describing constantly our thoughts, emotions and sensations, giving them labels. And this is something that I don't know what, but I just picked it up along the way. And I'm not sure what's your experience, but I think that almost 7 billion people are doing that. So what happens is this addiction and illness basically becomes uh, normal. And we think that that's the way to move around and that's the way to do life. Because <laughs> everyone else is doing it, so it might be right, but it's not the case. <laughs> but, you know, so taking any thought, emotion or sensation, immediately there's something attached to that uh, in terms of if I'm feeling sad in, in a so social circumstance, for example, or just by myself, then it requires me analyzing it, trying to go to the source of it. Maybe it's in my subconscious, maybe it's because of this, finding reasons for a momentary appearance and building a whole life story. And then not just that, taking the story with me wherever I go, because the sadness might come back again. So I need to know how to, which tools to apply to it. Envy or jealousy, uh, arrogance and pride, all the things that we try to avoid. Just the unpredictable display of our data streams. What we call here data streams are everything that appears within our mind, the content of our mind, thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences. They're always changing and unpredictable, ceaseless, flow, unending flow of, of data appearing in our own experience. So to try and build a life based and an identity based on micromanaging these, you know, choosing the good ones, confidence, happiness, thoughts, love thoughts, holding them good experiences, holding them in place and doing everything we can in order to get rid or not to be part of what is considered to be negative. So this was my life before coming across the Balance View training. I was an addict to my data streams. And when I came to Balance View, I was actually introduced to something that I've never noticed, something that is so essential that it's almost shocking that I've never noticed in my own experience. What is the basis of all of these ever-changing data streams? What allows me to know all of, all of my experiences? And this is what we called open intelligence. Open intelligence is the basis of all of these appearances, all of the data streams. And to be introduced to open intelligence very directly, stop thinking. Just for a moment. What remains? Openness, clarity, cognizance, awareness. This is open intelligence. This is the basis of our of our data streams, always on open intelligence. And now you have the next thought or the next emotion, the next data stream, and you can see that what allows you to know that is this fundamental basis, open intelligence. So whether we are thinking or not thinking, open intelligence remains. Our data streams, whether we are thinking or not, are inseparable from open intelligence, like the color blue is inseparable from the sky. We cannot separate both of them, you know, like the sky, what is aware, and then all the data streams. Many practices that I've done before were like a, practicing to be like a cat watching a mouse. I'm in the awareness state and all of these data streams, the thoughts and emotions, I'm just watching them. They're not part of me. I'm detached. I'm not looking, you know, like, and, and like, but what happens in this space of feeling a separation actually? 
and perpetuating isolation and neutralization of the potency of open intelligence. Because all of our data streams, whether we like them or not, are beneficial potency. And this is what we can recognize in a very simple practice that is offered here, and that is short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, until open intelligence becomes continuous at all times. The instinctive recognition of it becomes continuous at all times. And then we don't need to watch, we don't need to avoid, we don't need to replace or to indulge our data streams in any way. And this is great relief. This is freedom in immediacy of perception and com complete perceptual openness in all experience. It's a given. It's our natural state. What's looking through your eyes right now, this is open intelligence. So seeking for open intelligence or awareness or whatever you would like to call it in some kind of a future destination that will feel somehow detached from everyday life, not including what we condemn and to be bad, and you know, we'll have all these good vibes in the body and an open heart and a straight spine and a, I don't know, <laughs> only positive data or no data at all. This is completely made up. And that's why we keep running in circles, seeking for relief and seeking for stability in all the wrong places. What are the wrong places? I'll give a few examples. Thinking that once I will be in an intimate relationship, then I will be happy forever. Did it work for anyone? <laughs> no, but that's what we've been sold since the, since the age of five or six, whenever you start to watch Disney films, right? or whatever, Bollywood films. Once I will get the job and the money and the house and, the, and of course the wife or the husband or the triple couples or I don't know, whatever is your favorite thing, doesn't matter, then I'll be happy and stable. Never worked for me. The car, the recognition, you know, getting up, up in the hierarchy in my job or something like that and everyone will love me forever including my parents and my my granny and stuff like that never worked only in Goa <laughs> only with the right people in Goa or somewhere else for me it was Rishikesh <laughs> only in Rishikesh on the Ganga that's where I can find my stability so you see my options, like from the vast expanse of inexhaustible sky, freedom in immediacy of perception, always on, forever available, even right now you can test it in your own experience. I limited my own instinctive recognition because I was not aware of my option to rest body and mind for short moments repeated many times, regardless of what I'm thinking and feeling, and that's the best part. Because I thought that in order to reach this imaginary state, that I called in all kinds of beautiful ways, I will need to eradicate this 90% of my thoughts and emotions and be in very specific situations. So for sure it couldn't be taken to everyday life. It was a very confused maze of descriptions that I thought would be so satisfying. But that just led me to seeking and seeking and al almost to the point of exhaustion. I was like, stop it, that's ridiculous. Stop selling me bullshit. <laughs> And I told to myself, I don't want to seek anymore. I'm tired of that. And that's where I met the Balanced View Training. <laughs> and I was like, again, and, and again, another training. I was like really reluctant and stuff like that. But I said, OK, that will be the last thing that I try. And I was right. Because what I started to see in my own experience is relief with my sadness, inseparable from my sadness, with my confusion, inseparable from my confusion. No need to change the display. The display is perfect. We are perfect exactly as we are. Nothing about us needs to change in order to recognize this most essential nature, beneficial nature of our mind. It's almost hard to believe. It's like too good to be true. When I heard that you are naturally perfect exactly as you are, by, when I came to the first open meeting, I basically grabbed the trainer who was speaking, completely beautiful and open person, and I grabbed them on, after the open meeting and I said, nice talk, by the way, thank you. <laughs> you know, I brought my Middle Eastern kind of approach and I said, but don't tell me you don't analyze yourself all the time. And the person was an ex-psychologist, so I was like even more bewildered. 
And she just smiled at me and said, no, it's not necessary. And I was like, ooh, ooh interesting, <laughs> never heard that before. So I was intrigued to start practicing complete relaxation in order to prove that it's wrong. <laughs> so that was my motivation, you know, I was already bitter and twisted by all the many things that I've tried. Great gratitude, you know, I have amazing experiences as well, but essentially I didn't reach where I wanted. I had to be honest, to look at the mirror and say, by dedicating hours and days to analyze myself, to meditate, to jump around, to scream, throw stones in, in a sea in Melbourne, nothing provided permanent relief. <coughs> nothing provided permanent solution to my most essential problems and challenges in life. Nothing improved my relationships in a very profound way. I was just cultivating more and more ideas and I felt bombarded and like almost the heaviness of micromanagement almost took me down. So a short moment of complete relaxation is brilliant and then in balance view it's not just that, it's not like another ah, you know take this and something will happen. There's complete empowerment network to empower everyone who is fed up, <laughs> maybe had enough or just naturally ready to rest naturally. Everything is provided to make it obvious at all times. And what is available, first of all, is a, an incredible training that I've done in Goa uh, in 2008 called the 12 Empowerments. <coughs> it takes us as individuals with all our belief systems and assumptions and just shows us very directly that we emphasized data streams and we don't need to do it anymore. That we can give up the right to be a victim of our data streams. And all the belief systems and assumptions we have we can let them be as they are. And with that, what comes about through these 12 sessions of written text and, and just beautiful, beautiful training that Candice wrote, relationships start to change. Relationships with family of origin and friends, harmony starts to come about naturally in an uncontrived way. And our passion, our innate passion to be of benefit to all is released forever. And all the support and empowerment that is available from the beginning till forever is available to make it more and more obvious. Short moments repeated many times means that we can gain confidence in open intelligence in a gradual way until there's complete assurance. And that also once we have complete assurance, there's no end to it because it's inexhaustible. So clarifying to do the 12 empowerments. For me, it was really just the best gift I've given myself. And from then, since then, 10 years ago, or even more, um, my life is great. I don't look at my experiences and data and analyze them anymore. I enjoy the self-release, like a line drawn in space. Paranoia leaving no trace in space, same with my own mind. Everything is pristine and brilliant. It's like recognizing for the first time, and increasingly so, that living human life is like living on an island of gold, where everything is gold. No matter where we look, no matter what we think or feel, whatever we touch, is pristine gold, brimming with benefit.